everybody, it's Miss Jamie from the Hampton Bays Public Library and today we are going to be doing sink or float. So today we are talking about buoyancy, which is the ability for an object to float in water or air or some other fluid. And it all depends on different properties that the objects have. So their shape, their weight, their density, and their surface area all affect buoyancy. So if something is really heavy, it might sink to the bottom of water. If something is really light, it might float on top. And if somewhere is somewhere in the middle, it might float in between the water, submerged under it, but not on the top or on the bottom. So today, we are going to be checking out different objects and seeing whether they sink or float. And then we'll be making our own boat and trying to see how much it can hold before it sinks. So you have a checklist that I put on the event page or on the link right in this post. And you can follow along with me and it'll tell you two columns, sink or float. And right before that will be a column called hypothesis, which is your educated guess. So based on what you know about the world, and what goes on in the world of physics and what you know about the properties of different objects and the properties of water, you can make an educated guess called a hypothesis and figure it out and see if your prediction was right. So let's start experimenting. And here are the objects that I have to test. You can use your own, but you can play along with me and let me know if you found something different than I did or if you found a different object and let me know in the comments below what happened with your objects. So I'm going to start off with a stick. So I found this outside and we'll see, we're just going to place it right on top. You don't want to use any extra force to push anything down because you want it to do what it naturally will do. And there you can see the stick floats. I'll tip it up for you. And I have my trusty dish towel here to dry any of my things. All right. Did you guess correctly? All right, now we are going to start with something else, a rock. So all rocks are different shapes. So some rocks might sink, some rocks might float a little bit more, but what do you think will happen when I put the rock in? Let's find out. That sunk right to the bottom. Take that out. Now let's see, what do we think is going to happen with a cork? Now a cork is made from a tree, and I have two different types of corks. They're different shapes, so let's see what happens with each shape. This one's a more of a cylinder, and it's flat, and it's smooth, and it floats. Now this one has a bit of a top, but the bottom that cylinder shape and it floats. Were you right? Let me know. My next object is toys. Now you might have different toys than I do, but you can let me know what happens to your toys. I have a little dragon here and he's very light, so I think he might float. But we'll see what happens when I put him in. Ready? He sunk right to the bottom. You can't even see him anymore. There he is. I was wrong, so my hypothesis did not work out. Sometimes that happens. That's what scientists do. They figure out if their guesses are right or wrong. All right. 
Now I'm going to use a rubber duck. Now I think these will float because you can use them in the bathtub, right? And I have two different sizes, a big one and a little one. So let's see what happens. Floats. Doesn't float as well as I thought he would. He's a little bit slanted back. Let's see if my, my dino duck. Oh, he floats also, but not in the way. I think he was too top heavy, which means the top of him was heavier than the bottom of him. And so he tipped over, but he still floated. He's buoyant. So when people are making boats, they want to factor in all of these things so that their boats float, but they don't tip over. All right. Now, next thing is this little plastic cup. It has lots of air in it. So I think that might be a good thing. But let's see. Let's see what happens. Place it in with the opening right on the top. Oop, it tipped over just like the duck. And it has a little bit of water in there. But it's floating. So that would be something that we would want our boats to be airtight. Or waterproof. Watertight. So that air and water do not just come all in where we don't want it. Right, so that's still floating. I'm sure if maybe we left it for a while, it might fill up with more water and then sink. But we will see. And now our next part, making our own tin foil object. So we just want, you want to be very careful, you might want to have an adult because there's a sharp edge. And I'm just going to tear off a piece, and I want it to be as flat as possible. I'm going to take this and try to make the pieces as equal as possible, because we're going to do two different things with this. So I'm tearing off one piece, I tear it off the other. They're about equal, and I want to keep one flat, so I'm going to flatten it out as much as possible. I'm going to see if that floats. I'm going to move the camera. Yep, that is floating. So remember what I said, surface area. So the bigger the surface area, the bigger the amount of space it takes up and is flat. It distributes the weight evenly and keeps it afloat. If you put any weight, it might sink on one side and one other. All right. And now this one, I'm going to crumple up. So it's the same amount of tin foil, but crumpled up into a ball. I tried to make it so that there isn't any holes, so water can't get in. And I'll see if that floats or sinks. So the flat piece floated. Let's see. Oh, and it still floats. So were your guesses right? You can keep letting me know. I would love to hear. So now, I think it's time to make a boat. Right, so now it's time to make the boat. So I think I'm going to use the, a bigger piece of tin foil than we used for our flat piece and our crumpled up ball. And I'm going to use what we learned already. So we know that a flat piece floated and we know that other objects that aren't tin foil, if they don't have any holes in them, they are more likely to float. So we're going to make our bottom of the boat as flat as possible and we're going to make some sides so I'm just going to fold my sides and we want our sides 
to be as even as possible because like the ducks, we don't want the ducks, the ducks were top heavy, we don't want our boat to be top heavy. So we want all of the sides to be as equal as possible. So I'm just folding each side and I might make it smaller There it is, the boat floats. Now let's see if we can put a little captain in. So I have Cody here from the movie Surf's Up. And let's see what happens. I don't know if he'll be able to stand. Oh, I did good. So we're making sure that we have all of our pieces. The weight is all evenly distributed. Now I did a, a very square type of boat, but you could probably make it more of an oval or more of a normal boat shape. I'm going to take him off. For our next test, let's see if we can drop some pennies into the boat. So let's see if first off, what do you think? A, does a penny float or sink? So let's test that. All right, so that penny sunk. So that's not looking too good for our boat. But let's see how many pennies we can get on the boat. One, two, three. One, 52. 53, 54, and oh, 55. And it's still going and I'm out of pennies. I ran out of pennies and my boat is still floating, but see if your boat is a different shape or you made one like mine and see how many pennies you can get on it. Or try to make a boat with popsicle sticks and twist ties and other objects that you think will give it some support and structure and make it last longer. And you can comment below the pictures of the boats you made and let me know what you found sank or float. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.